I mean, if you've never had a pavlova before, this is a good example of why they're so good. It's just like crunchy cooked marshmallow and whipped cream and fruit. It's so fresh, it's so delicious. And it's so cute. <laughs> My name's Andy, and welcome to the Cakes Have Eyes and my perfect kitchen where nothing ever goes wrong, and I definitely don't have a breakdown in tears. Just my husband and I are eating this. Don't judge me, internet. Oh, uh, barf. Today, I'm making a cake inspired by, honestly, the movie that got me back into horror movies. We'll get into that later. It follows. You know, I don't like to do the most obvious inspiration from any of these movies. So when I thought, oh, what cake am I going to do that's inspired by, it follows clearly the shell e-reader. Obviously. In the spirit of it follows, let's make this violet and cherry pass around party pavlova or P-A-P-P -P -P for people who are down with clown. Let's go. Now, after last week's marathon of experimenting and ending up with a delicious cake, but exploding isomalt, I, all over my kitchen, I'm still finding chunks of blood red sugar just all over the kitchen. This really felt like a week that needed simplicity. There's a lot of pavlova recipes out there. They're all basically a bunch of egg whites, a bunch of sugar, make a meringue, add a little bit of vinegar, cream of tartar, or cornstarch if you want to stabilize it, pipe it out, bake it for an hour, cool it, or let it dry out in the oven for like two to three hours, add whipped cream and fruit, enjoy. Awesome. So because I want my pavlova to actually be in the shape of a clamshell, uh, like the e-reader in It Follows, uh, I need to approximate the dimensions of a nine inch circle within my shell. Um, so I'm basically making just a very rough kind of nine inch area for me to draw in. Now I'm just going to make my Drawing is one of those things that I always think I'm a bad drawer, and really, I just never practice. When you're a little kid, you're totally fine being bad at something. And when you're an adult, you feel like you should be good at it. So even if you haven't done it for, if you haven't picked up a pencil and drawn something for 10 years, when you finally do and you don't draw well, you kind of beat yourself up. You're like, oh, well, this isn't good enough. An adult should be able to do this better. But really, should you? I mean, have you been practicing? Do you take lessons? Do you read to try to like improve your skills? I'm not saying I do that for most things, but it's like a weird kind of thing that we hold ourselves to. Yeah, that's... It's good enough for the trait. I'm gonna take out two baking sheets, very loudly, pencil side down. Is this recipe doubled way too big for my mixer? I bet it is. I'm gonna do it in two batches. Yeah. Okay, let's whip up this meringue. 
<sighs> this is the movie that got me back to horror movies. The early aughts for horror were very much a kind of like torture porny, kind of relishing in people suffering kind of horror, which doesn't really scare me. It more bores and grosses me out. And being grossed out is not the same as being scared. When I saw It Follows, I feel like my eyes opened. And personally, I feel like It Follows really launched a kind of new era of the golden age of horror movies. And there's something about It Follows that it's not very gory. I show it to a lot of people who say they don't like horror movies and they love it because it's just, it's creepy and it has this lingering dread and it has tension and yet it's still really beautiful. So I want, I want different layers on this. I wonder if I should pipe it or need to pipe it. Or if I could just achieve my like scalloped edges with a with an offset spatula. I think I'm gonna pipe it though. I think it's gonna end up a lot better if I do that. One of the lessons in baking that you constantly are reminded of is anytime you try to cut corners or save dishes. Um, I'll just make them in the same bowl. I don't want to get a dish dirty or, eh, no, I'll just hold it. I don't want to have to get out this bag or this vessel to like just fill a piping bag. You almost always regret it. Pencil down. Okay, let's get you closer. like a seashell. <laughs> it also kind of looks a lot like a um, baseball mitt, like a pink baseball mitt. I think next time I'm not going to pipe it. I'm just going to put it all out and then use the spatula because that's kind of ultimately what I had to do anyway. Um, I'm gonna set this aside, make another round, and then they're ready for the oven. You know, one thing, piping deflated this a lot. Like this is kind of hard to see, but this is noticeably thicker. I mean, it's probably like a quarter inch thicker than this. It might've been how I mixed it, but I think it was just pushing it into the piping bag. So even, yeah, this is fine. They both kind of look like pink baseball gloves, but who cares? Okay, I'm going to throw these in an oven for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and then they cool for like two to three hours. So I will see you in a while. Here we are several hours later, and I've got my baked and cooled meringues, which largely seem to have held up. There's a couple big cracks, but who cares? Uh, I took some sweet cherries, it's winter, so I can only find them frozen. Basically reduced some cherries. I took the liquid and reduced it even further and then poured it back. 
So we've got kind of like a sweet, dark, tart cherry. And I made some jello eyes to put on top of our Pats Around Party Pavlova. My mixing bowl is chilling in the fridge because I read once that it being cold helps the cream whip up a little bit faster. I rarely remember to do it, but I remember to do it this time. Okay, so we pour about a pint of heavy cream into this bowl. It doesn't really matter since all I'm doing is whipping it up. Uh, I'm not adding anything. I'm gonna add a little bit of flavor, but that's just gonna be to taste. So let's get this whipping. Whipped cream is easy to make and very easy to mess up. It is a matter of seconds. Your whipped cream will be doing nothing. You'll step away for a second and then you'll come back to a curdled mess. So let's not do that. So we're gonna start it and then immediately walk away. I don't like going too fast on it because I find that it results in a whipped cream that deflates a lot faster. Maybe that's not true, but that's anecdotally my experience. I'm going to add a full teaspoon of violet extract. This would be way too much for some people. But I kind of like my food to taste like perfume. It's starting to show tracks in the whipped cream. So it's very close. We're talking no more than another 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah, that was another eight to 10 seconds. And yet another 10 to 15 seconds, it probably would have started to clump up. That is the magic of whipped cream. <laughs> My largest bread boy. Okay. Which one do I think looks a little bit nicer for the top? Honestly, I don't even remember. This will be the top. This will be the bottom. Ooh. Oh. I lost a little bit, but eh, so be it. Let's see. It's a Pablo ball, right? Okay. I just fully put that on the other baking sheet. So. <sighs> there we go. I actually want to kind of rake it a little bit. I want more whipped cream up front and in the back because I want it to kind of hinge open. Okay, I'm just going to use my fingers because fingers are your best friend in the kitchen. Okay. Cherry, 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 cherry. Oh, this was the right one to choose. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. What makes her a pass around party Pavlova, you ask? I don't know, she's friendly. She's eager to make new friends. She's open to new experiences, all sorts of things, really. Oh no, it worked pretty well. <laughs> Ooh. That one did not work. I lost a bunch of it. Um, um. What's happening? Okay, so the eye, the eye is kind of cr crushing the babloofa. Oh man, the pavlova is not strong enough to hold up these jaws. <laughs> You're gonna pass around this pavlova at a party. Your friends are gonna talk about it for years. You might not even wanna pass around the pavlova. When it comes your way, are you really gonna be able to say no? to this face, inspired by It Follows, my pass around party Bethlehem.
Oh. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. Look at her. She's looking at you. He's looking at you. Let's look at ourselves. Look at her. She's, I can tell she's a seashell, but if you think she looks like a foot, I'm not gonna fight you. <laughs> well, I don't know if since Jennifer's body, I have made something that is both so grotesque and tickles me so much. <laughs> now, if I were actually going to make this pavlova for people just to enjoy and not to be inspired by the shell e-reader in the near future technology of It Follows, <laughs> I might just leave the top on. You need a bottom to make it a pass around parody pavlova, but you could, if push comes to shove, do without a top. Oh. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Mm. Oh yeah. But like, the meringue is very crispy. Now, it'll get a little bit more marshmallowy in the fridge for a couple days. People say you should eat pavlovas the same day. I don't know. I kind of let them go a couple days and they get a little bit gummier and more marshmallowy versus crisp, which I think is perfectly nice. But it's like a little bit of cherry in the meringue, the dark tart cherry syrup, the floral whipped cream. Mm. Mm -hmm. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Andy, and this has been The Cakes Have Eyes. You can follow me on Instagram or YouTube. Like it, comment, boost it up the algorithm, share it with someone, giggle to yourself, Try a cake, don't try a cake. You know, I think this for me is just as much about experimenting and unpacking kind of why I like things as much as it is unpacking and trying why certain bakes work. No matter what, make sure you have some cake today. And of course, live deliciously. Bye. <laughs>